In this video, we're going to wrap up the top 10 features that the Power BI team has released in the year of 2022. We're going to go through each one of them and rank them based on their usability as well as their impact in my day-to-day -day work. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So as 2022 is coming to a close, I thought it's a good idea to have a look back at some of the amazing features that the Power BI team has worked so hard to implement that helped make our development lives easier as well as making our reports and dashboards looking even better than before. So there are obviously way more features released this year. So I'm only gonna cover some of the features that I thought needs to receive some special recognition, especially because of how useful they've been to me personally. Starting with number 10, which is the new and improved mobile formatting options, which went into public preview as part of the September 2022 update. This option allows you to basically create a mobile friendly version of your report without affecting the desktop version, making it super easy to design and organize visuals without having to recreate a different report altogether. This experience allows you to make independent changes to your visuals in your mobile version, like moving or resizing visuals without the desktop version being affected. You even have the option to link or unlink certain properties such as font sizes or colors, which can be changed independently, allowing you to create virtually any design on the mobile version. Number nine is the addition of more conditional formatting options for more properties across different visuals in Power BI. If you didn't know, it's this tiny FX icon that you sometimes see next to properties, which essentially lets you customize the values like changing colors or texts dynamically. If you didn't know, I covered it in a lot of separate videos in the past. Conditional formatting is very powerful to me because it's one of the ways that you can make Power BI reports do things that are not quite out of the box. So examples would be some of my recent videos on dynamic titles, or even highlighting target values. So these tricks rely on some fancy DAX calculation, but ultimately wouldn't be possible if the properties can't be conditionally formatted. So thank you for making this available for these visuals. Next on number eight is the data marts in Power BI, which was announced back in May, 2022. This addition was essentially a way to allow users to create and build data architectures without needing a lot of coding experience. If you use Power BI a lot, you'll be familiar with a lot of its elements that are similar to Power Query. The great thing about Data Marts in Power BI is that it allows you to manage data outside of a Power BI report. You can manage things like role level security, relational databases, store measures and calculations. What's more is that it doesn't constrict you to use only Power BI when building reports. Because Data Marts act as a relational database, other services, apps, and solutions can connect and use your data, making data easier to manage for you and easier to access by everyone. Next on number seven is metrics, formerly known as goals. So this feature is one that's been around since last year, but I thought I'd add it on this list for 2022 as it's gone through so much transformation throughout this year. So it's definitely deserving of a spot. Metrics allow you to easily track your most important KPIs by showing them in an easy to use format. As of right now, you can do things like link your goals to actual values in your reports, add your own values manually, create child metrics within metrics, collaborate with other users, create notifications based on targets, and even link metrics coming from different scorecards. For sure, I've missed out some other neat tricks with metrics. Throughout every monthly update I did this year, there's always a segment for metrics, so it's changed a lot since it was first announced last year. What's more is that it started off as a premium feature. Now it's available for pro users as well 
making it more widely accessible to anyone who wants to use it. Next on number six is the quick measure suggestions, which was a recent feature released in October. This essentially is an improved version of the quick measures feature in Power BI. So this is where you basically type a question in natural language and it will try to suggest measures for you based on the data that you have. These suggestions will be listed out to you along with the results and the underlying DAX that will be generated for you. This is such an amazing addition, which is especially helpful for new users simply looking to quickly get started with the reports, but with little to no experience with DAX. It's obviously not a replacement to learning DAX, but having DAX generated for you certainly helps speed up that learning process. Next on number five is this optimized ribbon that was just released this November. This gives you options to essentially pause visual refresh, which is handy when developing reports with large data sets or slow loading times. It lets you pause all your visuals or pause just certain visuals. And it even allows you to choose certain optimization presets. So you want to either maybe query, uh, focus on query reduction or reduce interactivity. This makes it easy for you to tweak and choose the right settings for your report. Next on number four is the network days function. Now, this was a standard function for Excel, which allowed you to calculate the number of working days between two dates. In the past, I had to create my own custom function to do the same thing as this type of calculation is pretty common in my line of work. But as of July this year, this has now been a standard function you can use in DAX as well. So a really great and handy addition. Next on number three is the new format pane, which I believe went into GA back in February. Oh man, when it was first announced and went on public preview, I'm not going to lie, I absolutely hated it. And at the time it's because I was so used to how the previous layout was and it was taking me a long time to get things done with this new layout. However, like many things in life, after using it for a few months, it sort of warmed up to me now and I'm pretty much so used to it and can appreciate its features. The ability to collapse and expand groupings, the search button to help you find exactly what you need, and it's pretty much improved the way I interact with visual properties in Power BI. Number two on my list is the error bars, which became available back in March. Initially, it was meant to be used to visualize error rates in your charts, but because of the number of customizations available within it, we managed to do some amazing things with it, such as creating some completely new visuals, shaded areas, which normally wouldn't be possible without a custom visual. The community saw what it's capable of and are now looking for more flexibility with its properties, which I think will ultimately change how this visual is used than its intended purpose. In a good way, of course, kind of similar to how the bookmarks are being used now. The last and my most favorite feature of 2022 are the field parameters, which released back in May 2022. Field parameters allowed you to create a slicer, which your users can use to switch axis or measures of your charts in Power BI. This means that essentially instead of having multiple charts slicing your data in different ways, you can have one chart that allowed your user to choose which dimensions are being shown and what measures are being calculated. I've been using this regularly in my work and it's been a great implementation because it's dead simple. It gives your users the ultimate freedom to analyze what they want without being bombarded with so many multiple pages uh, of the same chart. I've covered field parameters in a couple of my videos in the past, so if you're interested in learning more about it, go check out those videos. And that's really it for my top 10 features that came out in 2022. I want to thank the Power BI team for their hard work and their consistent updates to the Power BI this year. I also want to thank you all for continuously watching my videos and supporting what we do here in this channel. I wish you all a very happy new year and hopefully see you all in 2023.